Hi, welcome to this video on S-World Spreadsheets, which will probably be www.angeltheory.org slash video slash 38. Okay, I've just compiled this spreadsheet, put, 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 put some order to it rather, and I'm just going to go for it. Um, I haven't gone through it yet. I haven't scripted this. So we're going to be, uh, you know, there's, there's room for error in what, what, what I'm saying because I'm not very good at making videos, to be quite honest with you. Uh, it's not my speciality. But it's a lot easier to understand the spreadsheets with a video, especially when you've got a lot of them. Okay, so we're going to start, start rolling. Um, okay, so there are nine sections really common use spreadsheets that's spreadsheets that you know get used all the time uh history free spreadsheets that's the most important spreadsheet in terms of uh where we currently are with s world's uh super economics um history two very important as well because that 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 history two really was the uh it, it's the this version of the uh, the res spreadsheets it, it was done you know on a whim there was no script that it, it worked out quite well and um, we'll go to history four history three the sienna equilibrium the uh res v4 software idea um the trade model and lastly the very first version of of, of res okay so let's get going part one common use spreadsheets okay well this is the index to S World Stories, our um, Super Economics Book One, I suppose. Um, so each of these is its own story, and we can see we have how many bits it takes, how many words it is, how many pages it is, and then I've got this score ranking. It goes up to ten. Um, the more the more there are there, the better it is. Uh, but the more crosses there are, the rougher it is. So if we go here and see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ticks, that's a good one. M system special projects, it's a real good one. Um, where is it? Here we go. <laughs> uh, Thomas Piketty economic notes, one, two, three crosses. It means there's there's information there, but I haven't presented it well at all. And you know, there's a lot of these stories here. Um, Let's just do the math on it. Here it is at the end. The t t nearly made a million words. 993,000 words. Um, 24,000 pages. So this is what we're condensing. 24,000 pages uh, of relatively well thought out information, although it's not always presented particularly well. And uh, this is our index here. I wish I had a copy of... Uh, super economics one the watts because this shows this well um, all of these are shown in the watts um, okay aha okay this is this is a, this is a <laughs> it's a funny spreadsheet um, it's just a mathematical principle um, that uh, so happens if you follow it you can take a, a, a smallish company a very small company in fact um, if after two years that company can make enough to create two new companies using the systems we have it's basically free to create a new company when i made this spreadsheet it was tens no maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars um in fact it was 167 thousand dollars now it's well, with the Villa Secrets, it's free. Um, obviously, if one's building and manufacturing, that's a different thing. Okay. Anyway, this uh, this is it's from a a quote I heard from Professor Michael Green. Uh, the notion that this is the smallest constituent is paradoxically not at, not at odds that the statement it may also be the whole universe. I sort of tried to get my head around of that by uh, thinking about the smallest company or the smallest constituent of a company that can end up being the whole economy. And if we watch here, first year, second year, third year, create two. Then that one, first year, second year, third year, create two. That one, four, eight. And you, you go along, 
And by, I think it's, yeah, 2076, on paper, you've made that, that, that one company has, has become the entire, oh, the, no, it, it is now owns more GDP than the economy. It's, it owns over 50% of GDP. It's just a very simple mathematical process, uh, but it happened to be history one. Why? What is a history? Okay, a history is a prediction from now until 2080, or prediction from 2080 to now. Um, this is history one because it, well, this was in 2017 I made this, and it goes up to 2080. Um, in fact, you know, you could argue it's history 2076, not 2080, but, uh, you know. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's history one because, and it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's incredibly simple. Uh, just two free mathematic rules, new company first year, new company second year. Uh, well, you can read it here. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm dwelling on this, this one too much. Let's move on to the next spreadsheet. Okay, tax symmetry. This is very important. Um, it's basically, the I, in fact, this is incredibly important, especially to the book, uh, The Why, which has now opened up its its belly, its centre, to um, what is known as net zero dynamic comparative advantage. Um, you probably heard it here first. Um, I hope we hear it in a lot of other places. What, what it does, what that does is it says we're gonna we're gonna make a city or actually four cities in Malawi and the primary thing those cities are gonna do is make things that make things green because the rest of Africa needs all this and aid money will be dependent on it therefore the rest of Africa is going to be wanting to get the, the best source of uh, net zero you know be it a power station be it you know, water, be it, be it whatever, um, be it packaging, be it, uh, you know, wh whatever can be built, net zero will be building it. And that's basically the, um, the dynamic comparative advantage with a little bit of a cheat because we know the network as a whole is based on this and we, we can see it all over the world. And Whereas Stiglitz says it, finding a comparative advantage is hard enough, finding a dynamic comparative advantage is even harder. When your whole f city revolves around creating stuff that's net zero, and that is hopefully goes across Africa, so instead of them burning coal, they're using solar panels. That's our objective. And it's uh, when we combine it with the res equation, which which is what these spreadsheets are about, which makes enough money to do that, i.e. using the res equation, it's cheaper to use renewable than it is to not use the net equation and not use and burn coal. One of the things, I really am not explaining this spreadsheet at all, am I? One of the things that's necessary for this to happen is for governments to be paid in output. Governments to be paid in what they want. So we, we speak to the government and we'll say, let's take one here, uh, a government infrastructure. Do you guys want however much four cubes it would be? And these cubes, they're a lot of money. We'll see, we'll see that later. Um, do you want government education? Yep, government would like education. Um, government other, well, okay, that could be a government anything. Um, where's some more blue ones? Water. Government, do you want water? Yep, government wants water. Do you want power? Yeah, definitely want power. Internet, virtual education? Yep, yep, yep. What about um, social housing? Yep, 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 yep. And this actually forms a significant part. This is a... Uh, oh, I'll get to that later. Um, anyway, the idea is when you start to make your dynamic comparative advantage, so your net zero dynamic comparative advantage, you start with all the things that, 
all the special we call them the special projects uh it's what the whole of book three is about um those projects can be making power you know uh, let's use that as an example um so into the the way you, you make the competitive <laughs> there's a dynamic of average advantage you need to uh, we, we, we'll assign a block to be making solar panels say okay so there's one block of business making solar panels that they can they can you know because of res they'll be making profit out of it a lot of profit that profit then goes into making more companies using the pop rule um and very soon it snowballs the point, the, the point is both with creating things that are net zero for the future and creating things like education, we create, we, 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 we're, we're, we're creating what the government would like to spend money on if it had it. And what this shows us here, oops, what's happened? Uh oh, scroll down to the bottom, hasn't it? Uh, what this is telling us here is 60, no, let's use that one, 61.72% of what the network grand spin network will be creating is exactly what the government would want for its people and it's what the people would want the government you know everyone, everyone's happy um and that's tax symmetry you start off building things that uh, are creating things that the government wants which coincidentally most often applies to be is the same as what the special projects are so it's you know what the government wants for its people is generally good for the people no matter where they are and obviously we're taking away all the the coal and all all of that stuff and building these cities with, with the, all this uh, going on under this tax symmetry and therefore there's effectively no tax mm, well actually no because 18.75 percent this light blue here is per what the government wants. So the government can come along and say, look, we want this, this, this. These are what we have to have. And we'll say, right, OK, we'll make sure you get that. You know, that 18.75% Malawi, you guys you exactly pick what you want there. As long as it's not a military thing. Um, OK, so that's tax symmetry, essential to everything. Right, let's go to POP dimensions. Oh, OK. I have quantized the money. Huh. So we start at 0 0.001 cents. 0 0.0001 cents. That is the starting position. And ideally, every single cent that uh, gets transferred throughout the network is in these units is in no less than these units um and each one i don't know if this is going to happen or not each one i would ideally like to have its own its own serial number so each quantized cent has its own serial number um it's, there's a lot more i want to go down here and it's really not for me to talk about because i don't you know the, 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 there's this thing called qcd renormalization and i want it basically and i think by starting off by quantizing the uh the money um there's at least some way of uh you know i need to speak to people about this anyway so the money's like this it you times it by eight every time this is basically makes it cubic so it's financial gravity and we can see uh plenty of examples of cubes in the uh in, in the uh, in the, in the free in the free books and especially book three, uh, super economics sixty four reasons why, um, and generally this is this is what whenever I would try to find say for instance I've wanted to uh, in fact I'm just you know you, we can see what's going on here we try we you, you, we we either going to use these exactly or we can use by using by putting things in these little blocks of money and making little cubes all the time makes it a lot better. I'm, I'm going to move on because uh, this, this is quite abstract. Um, mm, OK, this is less abstract because we're going to make 87 quintillion different versions of what we're seeing now. OK, let's just put that into perspective here's the spreadsheets index 
so far we have well we saw history one because that was the uh, Michael Green one we have history two we have history three and hmm, that's odd I've got an error there I'm going to be correcting errors as I go that shouldn't be that let's just make that bold so I know it's error no I'm going to write error okay right um anyway as you can see there's only four histories so far so moving to 87 quintillion that is an 87 714 630 433 327 500 000, 000, 000 histories each of which has a billion different um uh reference points that we can note and therefore match each 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 one's capacity against each other so, and so, some of these will be done by humans hopefully as many as possible um from the mmo game SWCS and well that's that's you know that's that's from 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 that mmo game people playing this um the companies themselves will be people can play their own companies in the simulation um then of course there's the mission control where we've got very 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 trained people who are just looking and waiting for something to go out of whack because you know even if you've got all, all this amount of simulations even if you've got all this amount of simulations there's still an awful lot of uh swing uh, and um yeah so we got we, we mix this with Quest, which is the Quantum Economic System Core, which sounds kind of fancy, but actually all it is saying is we use humans alongside the AI. The AI, which makes most of these histories, um, you know, is it, going to be very, very powerful. Um, but it is the humans that work with it in Quest Command that uh, I think are, are going to make this make this all work okay um just how do we get to 87 quintillion histories uh computer can spit out 200 quadrillion calculations per second um i did that over seconds minutes hours days years and then i did a diminishing moore's law to give me there we have it the uh, 87 well actually it's 87 trillion quadrillion super computer calculations but i saved a billion calculations each so as we can probably properly look at it and record the uh, the data points that we're particularly interested in um and to finish off i actually the next s world story is building to be number 12 s or gcs beyond 87 quintillion histories in which um as previously mentioned earlier i would really like to try and find a way to really cut down on the amount of data we need from the that the, the, the can't be captured the infinite data um and be it quantum mechanics qcd renormalization or just be it a clever bit of calculus um whatever works works so it's not 87 quintillion different versions of what you're seeing now it's that if we can get the renormalization right, it's that times almost infinity. Almost infinity. <laughs> it's a paradox, isn't it? Okay. Part two. History three. Spreadsheets. Now this is the where well, there's a lot of data on this. Um this was the safe a safe version of history two that didn't include trade and only included three cities, four cities, and started with a rare, uh, with a spin of one, where, and we'll see how the other ones pan out. Um, there's a video for this all by itself, I believe. Oh, is it 34? No. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get on here, just on this on this index, I'm gonna put all the relevant videos next to it. 
So if you want to find the videos for the particular spreadsheets, hopefully we'll find them here. I'm just going to remember that error, history free spreadsheets. Looks like a duplication. Well, we'll work that one out. Okay, so where were we? Yes, we were here. Part two, history free spreadsheets. Right, okay, here's the big number that's going to make everybody go, <laughs> you idiot. You know, I would too, but I've, I've, we've, I've been working on this specific point for about one and a half years now. And I originally just came up with the idea in 2012. So it's not like it's a new idea. It's just I've been working specifically on that new idea. And I've done it so many different ways that we're going to see it done in different ways. And it always works out the same. Um, someone might blow a hole in it. You know, and look, there's, there's, that's, that's not the end of the world. There's other, other ways to, uh, to succeed, but it is, um, it would be a shame. And I started, and we'll see it in later versions, basically working on the, uh, the idea that I was wrong. And at some point I was going to work out how I was going to go right, but about, about eight months ago, I sent five different versions of a of a version of five different versions to five different people, and no one got back to me. And I think it's because there was nothing there saying this makes this amount of money and it's going to do these seven projects. So no one cared about the math. No one cared to 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 to, to talk to me about it. Um, so I've. Well, I just went with it and I've been working out different ways it works out. And the bottom line is for Malawi, which is our uh, hypothesis country, between 2024 and 2080, they're going to end up with, I think that's 24, yes, yeah, $24 trillion. Now, there's a double check here because what this spreadsheet, this particular spreadsheet is telling us this is possibly the main spreadsheet on this whole uh, of this whole collection um, and we can see it it's intense and there's a lot of it as well it's uh, goes to the right and it applies to special projects. And what it, at the end here, we see housing, $150,000 per house, um, CF, CFV adjustment. It's gonna, it's easier to show here actually. Yeah, so housing, this builds either 2,396 houses or 1,185 if the CFV adjustment is right. CFG is cash flow variable for what cash buys you as to what GDP you get for it. And it seems to be about 50%. Um, yeah, so following that down, and we get to these figures here, this is telling us well, that's telling us something is close enough. Anyway, we I've extrapolated that back to get to these figures where we come back to. And the double check is what what what's going on here is we're starting in Malawi with basically zero or five billion, I think. Um, and by the end, we end up with one percent of global GDP. Now, starting at zero, and it's pretty much a solid line going up. It doesn't sort of have a curve to it. Not that I can really see it that well because it's plotted on quarter of a million different spreadsheet cells um yeah so but it looks from, i think it will be pretty straight and the, the math shows it i did uh, an example for united arab emirates who have half a percent of gdp and you you half a percent of gdp for half of 80 half of 2024 so, okay half 
a percent of GDP from 2024 to 2080 is the same as starting at zero and ending at one percent if it's a straight line in between um comes up with the same money and that's the double check because this is what we're talking about we're talking about the cash flow that is going to be created from this res process that i'm not going to get into here because there's other videos for that that are in detail and um what we what what we're looking at here is, is is what gets made out of it and you know you see this and obviously someone's gonna if someone's watching this they've obviously seen something already this is this is this this is this is good but it's insignificant it's not insignificant it's it's nowhere near as important as the work that i'm currently doing in book three because yeah you've got 24 trillion in cash flow the same in cash flow same cash flow as uh uae ha would have for for 56 years um but of that cash flow 50 percent is now at, and it's going to be more than 50 percent 50 percent because of the net zero dynamic comparative advantage we've got half of all of that cash flow doing good stuff you know and that's in that's that's the real magic that's the sort of where it steps up from special relativity as an analogy to general relativity special the special relativity is the idea of res and it can increase the money supply and that's fantastic because countries like malawi need it um and you know it, 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 it's it, it it can be a very 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 powerful thing but if one was to create a new sort of economics super economics that was just better it's basically but it's a it's a, it's a monopolistic system by the way um the reason why it works so well is because it's basically a digital monopoly um i was worried about that for a while but i'm not worried anymore uh it does so much good and uh it's only the uk and europe that are anti-monopoly nowadays so it's not it's not it's not it's not a really bad thing uh being a monopoly um okay where was i um, yeah the yeah the point is it can make that 24 trillion yeah but half of it at least half of it is going to be spent doing things that you know things that we all really 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 need and things that we all really, really want to do, like build a colony on Mars. Uh, that's one of the special projects. Okay. Let's move on to the next spreadsheet. What have we got here? Uh, this is actually right at the pinnacle. It's very ugly at the moment. Um, and actually, it's very relevant considering what I've just said. Okay, this is the plan for the it's, it's a cube i like things in cubes we've talked about this a little bit um each one of these cubes is 164th i think uh of the no sorry the 64 cubes so each one of these cubes is 24 trillion divided by 64 there you go so it's a huge amount of money each one of these um and what we see here is there's investor cube uh investor cube invest in investor tax symmetry investor tax symmetry now investors get paid in network credits by the way has to be that way um, but they can get paid a lot of network credits and they can run their operations from the new malawi and uh help okay investor special project that's where an, an investor uh say it's elon musk and he builds a gigafactory there you go invest a special project he, he builds tester there we're going to sell testers everywhere let's say invest that's what google joins in and makes the google gt uh google tesla automated vehicles maybe i don't know you know there's there's a lot of stuff here there's these are the, these are the three government alloc allocations that i mentioned earlier uh SWOT film other special projects paid to learn all these purple ones you see welfare internet solar energy SWOD vsn education 
leagues, Mars Resort one, <laughs> Angel City one, Education Projects, Net Zero Special Projects, Net Zero Projects, Sienna's Forest, Global Cooling, African Rain, Their Oceans, Net Zero Industry, Net Zero Industry, Net Zero Infrastructure, Net Zero Special Projects, Net Zero Special Projects, Net Zero Special Projects, Spartan Housing, Spartan Housing, Spartan Housing, Spartan Housing, Housing, and other, 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 times 16. This is the current net zero dynamic comparative advantage. What the companies are going to be in Malawi in the uh, over over the the course of the the 50, 50 something years, um, and yeah, that's I'm, I'm feeling a lot better about this spreadsheet. This is a very new spreadsheet. I've never discussed it before. Um, okay, right. So like, yeah, we get the idea there. I hope. What have we got here? Ah, okay, this is a work in progress. Um, okay, GSN is uh, Global Spin Network. No, Grand Spin Network. Uh, Grand Spin Networks are what we call the cities. If we say we're going to build four cities in Malawi, Angel City One and three commercial cities um, who are owned well, not owned, who are invested in initially just by one company or one group of companies or could even be a bunch of universities. Um, okay. So this is, what's this telling you? There's 248 companies in a Grand Spin network. Um, in fact, this spreadsheet is out of order, I think. Yeah, this one should come first. This one should become before that one still. This one should be last. Okay, okay, yeah. I might have that one second. Okay, so, okay, so we talked about this spreadsheet. This is just extrapolating, actually, I'm going to show it to you now because uh, it's, it's easy to show you. Okay, so this is our, it's called the REST calculator. This is what we're looking at here, years cash flow, 5.6. Twenty six, fifty three. Okay, and we can see these figures here: five point six, twenty six, fifty three. There we go. This is the uh, the cash flow each year: twenty twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, forty three, forty five, forty six. All the, all the cash flow on one sheet. There's a lot of cash flow. Um. Why this cash flow is more than the 24 trillion? Because this cash flow has uh, had growth of 2.5%, I think, added to it all the time. Actually, it has 5%, 2.5% of that 5% is global growth. Um, okay, so there we see this money. Now, this is, this, is the, this is the key one. This is the money that goes to special projects. Okay, you can see here, that's that 24 trillion. We divide that by two because half of that is goes for other things that need to be done to facilitate this. Then there's of of the balance of that twelve trillion is divided into two hundred and fifty six, and I sometimes call that quanta of the special project allocation. And one therefore one quanta of a special project allocation is forty seven billion. That's over the full length of time, 2024 to 2080. Um, and we can see here the, um, the allocations. Allocations, two for Experience Africa, which is conservation. Uh, none for the Experience Economy, because that's a, a law, not a, 
Advance the Human Potential 3, Cities of Science 2, CNS Forest 6. And we can just see over here, this shows whether it's ecological, what, what the main purpose is. This one's ecological. Um, and this is education. And we go through 64 different projects. And we see that 27% uh, are ecological. 40.2% are educational. But included in that figure, we I've, I've, I've put in the infrastructure and power and all sorts of other things, which are relatively essential also for special projects. It, you know, it's, it's a facilitating uh, amount. Okay. So, yeah, that's, you know, this is what's at stake. And this is the difference, I hope, between when I sent five presentations up about a year ago to Oxford. I uh, didn't get any response. But there was no reason. This Now there's a reason why. And there's 64 reasons why, you know. And the map is good. That's the thing, you know. We just, well... Is this math good? This math, I, I, def, I really can't find a, find where it's wrong. Um, it's a monopoly system. It's digitally enhanced. So therefore, it should be better than everything else. And it's just organized compared to the rest of the chaotic economy. It's, it's uh, it also, it's because cause, cause, cause the, cause the, cause the money is quantized as well to a degree. Um, it means we know where everything is at every single point. Um, and we direct money. Okay, so they're the special projects. What have we got here? So I'm just going to get a sip of Pepsi. Pepsi Max. Used to be a Coca-Cola man until I found Pepsi. Right. So, okay, here we've got the cash flow again. Same as here. In fact, it's taken from here. Taken from here. So we get the cash flow. And we've I've just done it 24, 25, 28, 32, 40, 48, 50, 60, 70, 80. Okay. What does this do? Well, in 2024, it starts with 2,048 companies. And on average, although you can't see this data here, um, I think they make about two and a half million, something like that. Actually, that's probably the figure there, two, 2.7 million. That's the cash flow each individual company has. Um, Labour is 25% of cash flow. Um, I'm hoping we can get higher than that. Um, but uh, I think the global average is more like 15. So 25 is already quite high. Um, also, the higher the, the, the salary is, the less people can have the salary. Um, uh, so, remembering that uh, PPP, etc., um, twenty-one thousand dollars in Malawi is 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 equivalent to, you know, seventy thousand dollars in the USA. So, it's twenty-one thousand is a good salary, and it creates sixty-five thousand good salaries. And they were called con uh, Spartan contracts. Has been a facet of the theory since 2012 in the theory no in american butterfly the theory of every business so a spot on contract is you go into it it's 16 years long well yeah I, I don't know for a starter it's 16 years long at the end of it you own your own house 25 percent of your money goes to paying for that house um and of, no, sorry, 25% of this. And that basically creates 6.25% of all cash flow in the network being spent in housing. So we know at least we're going to be building that amount of houses so we can make that amount of housing companies, that amount of brick companies, that amount of sand companies, etc., 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 etc. Okay. <laughs> Remembering that uh, personnel are not taxed by the government because the government get tax symmetry. 25% goes to paying for their own home. It's taken from their, but it's still taken from their, their budget. So they don't have it to spend. It goes straight to the to the building companies and the brick companies, etc., etc. Another 25% goes to what I call pay to learn. And essentially, 
if we've recruited someone from a rural village, that money will go to that rural village and it can even go to the person's family and friends in that village. So 25% of the salary is basically taken away, divided it in four. So one, two, three, four people at first who get $1,356, which remembering, well, not remembering because I haven't told you yet. Um, per capita GDP in Malawi is £250 a year. So the average person in Malawi gets, two, sorry, not pounds, dollars, $250 a year. So $1,356 is not insignificant. Okay. And then the day, it's the, the idea there is you, 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 you pay people enough to live and they can learn themselves. You know, we're going to give them all sorts of stuff to help them learn. I'm going to really enjoy making that. And I'm big influence. <laughs> not Einstein is um, Ready Player One. Uh, the Spielberg film. What's the author's name? He's a great guy. Well, he writes great books. Anyway, um, but he, yeah, listen to what he says about virtual education. It's, it's, all, it's, all, it's already done. All we need to do is make the, uh, the hardware and the software. Okay, so, okay, that was in 2024. Let's go to 2048. I call this Angel City 4. At that point, there would be 4 million paid people at $27,000. And I have taken into consideration the uh, global growth. So that's $27,000 in today's money. Um, and, oh, sorry, we start off with 250,000 pay to learn trainees. And in 2048 would be 10 million paid to learn trainees. Uh, they're, they're getting a little bit more, 2,700. Um, now, but one thing to note here is whilst these numbers have been adjusted for, and you can see the adjustments over here, have been adjusted for growth, um, they haven't been adjusted for the decrease in POP. So really in 2080, $49,000 in Malawi is going to be pretty much the same as $49,000 in America uh, or England. Um, so it's not as, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a good wage for me. I, <laughs> yeah, you know, if you could pay me that to do this, I'd be happy. Um, yes, it's a good enough wage. You know, I think in England, that's 40,000 pounds, no tax. Ah, you know, that's good. Right. Anyway, uh, by 2080. There's 10 million jobs paying $49,000. And there's 15 million people in education. So that's 25 million people. Malawi's only got 18 million people at the moment, but I do expect it to go to 40. And maybe even because of the emig economic emig immigration, maybe even to 80 million. Um, you know, we can always do better. This, this plan, let me just show, where has it gone? Here, all we're doing here, we got one city. No, 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 no. Let's go right to the end. Okay, we got three cities here and the Angel City, and nothing in trade. You know, these are token figures. So there's huge amounts in history too that we'll look at soon. There's 16 and there's trade. So there's a lot of ways to make more money. It really is, although it sounds ridiculous, this is a conservative estimate. This is a very conservative estimate. Um, I, did, I started spin at one, you know, whereas it could start at eight. <sighs> yeah, very conservative estimate. Um, but not in terms of the overall money that it'll make because it's, once it makes enough, that's it. it it's not going to try and make any more. Um, let's find a little quote from Danella Meadows about that somewhere. Where is it? There we go. Growth is one of the stupidest purpose ever. In any culture, we've got to have enough. I got that from Kate Rawa's book, Donut Economics, which is a must read absolute must read okay so jobs and education we've seen that we've already looked at this this is the 
the setup of the companies. What is what is this? Is this telling us anything useful? Now this is working out some some technical points. As is this okay? So part right. So we finished history three now, and we go to history two. Okay. Right. History two starts with eight spins. See here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you go to 2025, we can see we've got figures for trade here. Um, exports, 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 uh, which we didn't have previously. Uh, we're just really monitoring things by the R and the E. Create, increasing the spin so it spends the money quicker and quicker in the same year and in e increasing the efficiency of the monopoly i.e 93 percent 93 percent of all the money is going from one company to another company in the same network ah we can use this little graphic i think so yeah so we'll say this company is buying this from this this company is buying this from this this is buying this from this and all of the staff are buying from the service companies, etc., etc., etc. So overall, ninety-three. When it when R is ninety-three, recycle revenue is ninety-three. Um, then ninety-three percent of each exchange of money, each time the, the entire network spends all its cash flow. It will spend 93% of that cash flow with other companies in the same network. And as soon as that process is finished in a spin, it then spends it again. Again, with 93. So it's an e-leakage of 7%, e-leakage of 70%. So it's 93% monopoly, 93% monopoly, spinning, spinning, spinning that money, turning it into 79 billion. Yeah starting whereas genuinely then well not genuinely normally uh that, that's that's what one gets one spends one's money and you know one has to go out and sell stuff to uh to afford to spend this money in this case 93 percent of the money instead of having nine billion one has 79 billion that's a uh there should be a percentage somewhere that tells us what Hmm. No, there isn't what the ROI is. Okay, so another thing about this is we got recessions. And for the economists, check this out. Because here I predicted a 50% reduction in all inputs, all real estate, cities sold, just yeah, just to, these are whole cities sold. This is Angel One, Angel City One sold. Uh, this there's one, two, three, four, five different city projects. So we could be calling in large towns. Fine to call it large towns. They're not massive, massive cities. Not at first, anyway. Um, so the city cost has come down in half. All inputs are down in half, but. If we look at cash flow the year before, 118 goes up, even though there's the recession to 127. And the recession is worse. Look, it's gone down to 25%, all inputs. So if you see a country's inputs go down to 25%, that would be crippling. Absolutely crippling. Um, and yet, oh, the cash flow has increased again. What? How can that be? It's because we're making the money from what's basically what is now known as savings. Um, where's the savings? <laughs> Here they are. That money is rolled over to here and becomes part of the revenue here. 
which is put here. But because we've increased E, the monopoly power to 99%, so there's virtually nothing escaping from the, from the entire network. And we've increased spin to 16, so the money is spending faster and faster and faster. It increases the cash flow, even though all the inputs have gone down to 25%. And it does the same next year as well. Look, recession ending. I increased E some more, went up went up quite a lot that year. What was, what was that? 138 to 217 in in a recession. So they're, they're, that's a much better way of... Because uh, the money's always in the bank, you see. This money here is in the bank. It's, I, ideally, I want a giant pyramid that is almost nuke-proof but transparent and all the money in cash in the middle. And if you've read a, the first Jack Reacher book, you'll know how massive amount of money that would be. It would be the size of a uh, of an apartment building. Just money. Probably US dollars. Um, yeah, so the money's always there. Never, money never leaves that bank. It just issues it to the first company. The first company then puts the sell order in, buy order, buy order, buy order, buys from the second company, pays the second company, millisecond later pays for the third, four, fifth, six, seven, eight, all until the 2048, all the companies have bought from each other. And uh, it can do that again and again, as we see. Right, so what, what else? Well, it's just just ride it out. Uh, I think there's another recession, bigger recession. Is this is bigger. Yeah, you see that here. <laughs> Economists, pay attention. All input is zero. There's no money coming in at all from any avenue whatsoever. Not a penny. But cash flow year before six hundred and thirty-one. Cash flow when there's no money coming in at all, 701. Just by increasing, and at this point, E has gone to 100%. It's a complete monopoly. There is no money leaving the money, the network at all. And theoretically, one could actually spin an infinite amount of time and have an infinite amount of money. But the practicality of uh, spinning, the logistics, you know, um, you know, the, log the logistics have to be tight. And this idea is... It's taken about 20 years to perfect to be able to spin at 20. And then one does it a little bit at a time until one has, has, it, has, it, uh, has a system so complete that it, it, it can, it can, it can, no, it's just great. <laughs> I lost my words there. But anyway, I, I actually, I've, we've comp I haven't looked at this spreadsheet for a, lo for, for a long time and I now got, now that I have confidence that the, like, I haven't made a mistake in the in the actual rest system, and now that I've seen how it, the NDA, the uh, net zero compar oh, dynamic comparative advantage, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to see that I think there's another recession. Oh, I, I do some things here, but the, the most important thing I do is in between 2050 and 2060, I think, because I steady the cat, I steady the GDP. Mm. Actually, I, there's a there's another spreadsheet that goes with this. So I really, ah, here it is. Okay, let's try and find that GDP steadying. And this is in 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 uh, for for for. Danella Meadows and Kate Raworth, and anyone who's uh, got it, Paul Collier, of course, and anyone that's, that that knows about these things. Uh, oh, where's my? Yeah, that's the years I want. I want to see some percentages. That what's going on here? It, no. Oh, 
Where is the stuff that I'm looking for? Hmm. Okay, I can't find the bit that I'm looking for. It should be... Here it is. <clears throat> We're looking for a share of GDP to be static. There we go. After I've achieved the target that I wanted in 2050, which is 1% of GDP, I, my natural instinct was not to get, not to increase that. That is enough. That is more than enough, actually. If you if we if we, if we work with the dynamic comparative advantage strategy, uh, net zero one. Uh, and just here's the here's the proof there. That's that's what I did instinctly. Just made sure it just flatlined, didn't increase. It could have increased. See, it increased massively because I then do some other experiments. Uh, there's another depression. Um, anyway, I think we've had a good look at history two, and if memory serves well. That is video twenty five. Angeltheory.org slash video 25. No, slash video slash 25. Okay, part four. History four spreadsheets, which are basically the same as history three, but slightly updated, ready for someone to work with me on it. Hopefully Kate Roth and Steve Keen and Paul Collier, maybe. Hmm, yeah, that would be nice. Um... I'm going to take a break now because it's been 56 minutes um, and I'm going to come back a little bit later and we're going to carry on um, with probably another hour maybe. Right, okay, I'm going to pause for a bit. Okay, I am back and I am fed. So where are we? History, part four, history four spreadsheets. Okay. How have we got? I think we've got. Okay, so this is microeconomics. This is a, something that I've kept cash flow, a bit of tax symmetry. This is. Hmm. I think this is basically a, a duplicate of history three. But I've added spin from the beginning. And this is basically, I think if we look at the other one, yeah. And this one is 2020 to 2024. Yeah, okay. Which is obviously needed. Um, been re writing about this recently actually okay so this is um history four and it's it's primarily for kate walworth hi kate if you're if you're watching um the idea was you would do history four with me and uh, steve keen would do five um and instead of using what i'd used uh do you do your own thing um, based on histories two and three. Um, and we'd also include 2020 to 2024. And yeah, it's basically ready for, you know, ready ready for the next person to, to join in. Showing some of the uh, systems diagrams. Belief, Kate's own donut. Yeah, okay, so that's 2020, 2024. It's not, I haven't put a lot of time into it. Um, now, and this is the new history for ready for Kate to tell me 
well, I suppose the conversation would go, you know, let's first talk about AGOA exports in 2024. What do you think? We have a discussion. If we put some money in, there you go. It enters it into it and, uh, and the history has changed. Um, we'll talk about the cities. Uh, fortunately, I've done a lot of work on the cities recently. Indeed, that's what I'm so happy about at the moment. The net zero dynamic comparative advantage. Um, and yeah, we're just basically we're going to make history number four. That's it. I don't think I need to, to go into any more detail than that. This is in the same family because it's SOSV5. Um, what is this one here? Uh, SOS V5 as well. So that's why it's in the same family. Um, we've got some cash flow figures there, I think. And we're, we're working into sort of how the how much the housing stock is worth. I mean, I don't really remember. I remember doing this bit here. Housing stock is worth. Tender business is worth. Total 154 billion cost 27 billion okay and that's yeah that's obviously where i'm going with this this is an investor sort of vibe for 27 billion you get chance 150 billion in this particular method not just claiming to res and saying wow how good it, how good it can be um we've got here a little bit on tax symmetry um got 100 percent here so tax symmetry 18.75 is directly uh, signed by the government, 6.25, which is now called paid to learn for welfare. Labour housing, 6.25, um, Spartan housing. Autos, there you go, there you go. Uh, Elon, that's, that's the budget for autos, 25% of uh, all the money. Labour direct, interesting. Okay, that's the rest of the labor before, yeah. Power, water, virtual education, S1 Angel Wings, Sienna's Forests, others, others, others. Yeah, okay, so that's that. And this is very recent. This is coming from book number, Super Economics book number two, The How. And uh, this is about Villa Secrets Scenario 8. Uh, if one goes to villasecrets.com and clicks on the network tab, one will come to network.villasecrets and see Scenario 7, which is a 300-page uh, book. Um, and Scenario 8 basically extends that with specialization and scale. Quite quite excited about that. And this is basically not for Villa Secrets per se exclusively. This is the idea for all businesses. Um, they scale and they specialize and they use the software so they've got the advantages the software being scenario 7 software okay <clears throat> right now we're at part 5 bathtub history this is specifically for the the main event which is the uh, the SRS financial engineering show to via the uh, the bathtub examples maybe I should should I yeah let's do it. let's try and find it in this book what can you see I can see that yeah you, the part of the top of the book's cut off but uh, where are we where are we yeah here we go this is what I'm talking about this is the main thing for anybody if we get this right everything else falls into place and we can see I've done some engineering diagrams how it works and then it comes to this spreadsheet okay this spreadsheet is the spreadsheet we're on now res versus v6 bathtub history where after we go to the totals column that we saw earlier in history three and from there, we apply to the special projects. Okay. So that's, you know, it's very simple. Cash flow. Ah, note 
here that I think there's a, I, I made a mistake on 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 history three and history two in the way I calculated the original cash flow in the first year. I didn't apply it when I should have done. Um, but it doesn't matter because it just made me lose money. So it made yeah basically with the problem fixed it made more money so there's no problem if it's making more money you only got to worry if it's not making enough money okay what have we got ah oh, okay this is interesting just a sec have another bit of gorgeous diet pepsi or is it pepsi max i'm not sure maybe you guys should sponsor me right this um this was this was the uh, the bathtubs diagrams. Where are they? Okay, you see this one here, the last one, how it snakes around. That's basically a, a graphic representation of this, where we can see it snaking around. What I call the Sienna equilibrium. Let me just make the spreadsheet smaller so you can see it there we go uh yeah so it go it comes along different sector spending just get caught in the mix and they all turn around and they all spend each other spend the same money on each other again and again sienna equilibrium fear of every business dynamic comparative advantage now net zero dynamic comparative advantage and uh, yeah, this would basically go on for as many spins as as one had. Okay. Right. So part six, Sienna Equilibrium. I think we're now back in uh, 2018. In fact, I'm pretty certain we are. Um, okay. If it holds the name Sienna, it's obviously something very important. Uh, and it is. Um yeah, what we're talking about here is how the companies buy and sell to each other. Um, I've made different sectors, property developer, building supplies, interiors, electronics, financials, Tesla, education, as you can see. And uh, added some other elements. This then goes into this, this system here. And then I worked out from labor to building supplies, what's but going where, who's paying for what. And this led me, led me to work out that you, you can make a, a, a perfect equilibrium of everybody buying from each other if you've got enough companies. And uh, John Turow, I think his name is, sorry man. Anyway, he, 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 he's a Nobel economist who, who concurs, he says, uh, as long as you've got enough companies, they'll all be able to buy and sell from each other. And this is what we're doing here. We can see, you know, it's got some detail to it. Um, and to the right, I then worked out, tried to work out what I call the cash flow variable, the David A. Moss, cash, Moss uh, Harvard's finest cash flow variable. Um, and I do that by of the output, how much of the the stuff we make, how much is uh, sold to the public, and that gets a hundred percent. How much is 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 purchased from another business? How much? Sorry, how much is it? How much of a? How much of everything? Ah, oh, dear. Oh, I haven't explained this well at all. Um, okay, if you've got a house. You sell the house for $250,000. You don't then add the cost of the windows, maybe $5,000 to the house, $255,000 and say that's 200. If you, you, cause that's already been used. It's already been pa paid for. It's already been used. Um, so you can't double count. This avoids double count. This is working out what counts as GDP and what doesn't. And if we go down, we can see various ones. And at the very end, we tally it up. And this one tells us that 66% of the, 
of cash flow will end up as GDP. Um, we've got this, this is Siena Equilibrium 106. 107 does the same thing, but for a different industry. So the second section here is different. This one is now for building supplies manual. And the last one was for building it, building industry factories and machines. Uh, more the original setup, the stuff we need to build the factories in the first place. Right, okay, and on this Siena Equilibrium, we did the same exercise with the output, and this one gave 47.7% of cash flow will end up as GDP, or final sales goods. Now, I've used this, it might be wrong, you know, I haven't mathematically proved to myself that it's, it's right, but when we do the... Um, the analogy between Malawi 2024 and 2080 and United Arab Emirates, as I said, uh, the, the Malawi ends up at 24 trillion. Uh, that's in today's money. And um, UAE ends up at 23 trillion. And I applied this cash flow variable to the Malawi figures. If I had not added this cash flow variable, the um, Malawi figures would be double 24 trillion and it would be well out of whack with the UAE at half a, ha, ha, half of GDP for, it's, it's, it's the, same, the same thing, half of GDP for 56 years is the same as starting at one and ending at, uh, uh, in, starting at zero and ending at one. Uh, with a flat a flat line as uh, showing growth. So that teaches me that I, I think we pretty much got to accept this C cash flow variable is about 50%. Okay, that's the Sienna equilibrium and the cash flow variable. Okay, uh, part seven, REST v4 software. We're going, skipping back, I think, to early 2019 now. And what we're going to see here is this is how I want to build the, this this in software. So as we've got this, which is the uh, the res calculator, which calculates the amount of cash flow we make when we spin and applies all these trade, export, cities, etc., 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 and you see it takes a whole one of these because I've got to do all the columns when it comes to 32 just to make a simple uh, yearly follow on. Now, building this in software would mean could, I could do that instantly. And I know how to do that. It's not it's not it's not a hard thing. Those of you who don't know computer science, if you can do it on a spreadsheet, you can do it on software. Um, so this would be the controller. OK. Um, here we've got global growth and all I would do if I was like oh, I didn't like that 103 I'll just change it to 102 uh, let's actually do it 102.5 I'm not sure if this is wired in yeah no it doesn't make any difference I haven't this is this is an experiment um, no uh, um, presentation of the of the graphic interface is not actually working um, notice these purple things purple cells these are all essential um, attributes that we need to start it's kind of like a standard model you've got to put a few things in to, to get it to get it to work um, and that that that's done on this tab here and for instance, we can see here exports 50 uh, million, AGOA, and if we go to, uh, is, it gonna, is this going to, yeah, there we can see that, that would change that. Okay, so we, we would start with this um, starting section, which can be set to uh, automatic. 
so as it just uses the um, standard variables put in but it allows one to put in an awful lot of information for all of the relevant uh, fields you add this information in here to, to set it up and then of course you can just change bits of this information to make different histories so these startup variables we put in the figures here and these then appear here in purple so it's eight spins it's 103 percent i wonder if that one's working 102 yeah okay that one's working that one's up there is not that one's working yeah okay so this is working this is a working system yeah so um you can even these would be automatically put in all the purple ones by that starting sheet or you could just lead it on default or you can pick up where another colleague has started maybe uh maybe uh steve keen and i put in some some beer it's time <laughs> and really have quite quite a lot of fun and make a good one of these uh and that's a good starting position for then kate to maybe start off with and then she can go a different way with e and s e and s are the main factors you know this is what i want to do so much is be able to just type in here i want to change this to 29 this is 28 and then see what it happens and eventually train an ai to do that to look for certain things that we want if we're looking for maximum uh, special projects minimum externalities maximum internalities you know we find a balance between the best of all you know that and this 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 is this is what this is supposed to do this this is a uh, a a quick a quick version of this sorry of this so that our very familiar spreadsheet which is two hundred and fifty thousand cells um here it would just do that in a split second and one could still go on to this sheet to uh it wouldn't be a sheet anymore uh in fact i'm not sure if we would go onto this sheet no i don't think so i'll program it so as it'll work because it doesn't hurt to doesn't hurt to see it like this i suppose but no in general what we're looking for is this version this this controller obviously going down to 2080 and the initial inputs and we go over to the right and we see so what are we what are we controlling here of critical importance is the e and the s uh it's actually now recycle efficiency and spin global growth gotta know that i think this is coming from that yeah, that is coming from the spreadsheet so that's that's a calculation that's not a variable this is the variable we can change but let's just say exports trade exports no sorry exports trade real estate sales aid city phase one city phase two cities phase one and two revenue one two three and four law of conservation of revenue now called savings um that's from hawking by the way thank you very much my my legendary teacher who didn't even know it anyway um we got the year what do we got global growth again and what we got here okay projected cash flow very important okay uh growth growth in that it's just telling us how much growth okay this is telling us how much gdp based on a uh, cash flow variable of 50 percent global output is a calculated so we then work out what percentage we have of global output and uh, we see we start at 0 0.0, .0 well, actually, this is not, that's not correct because we start lower than that. Um, but anyway, that eventually ends up as, as 1%. And of course, one can do whatever experiments they want. They can try and move it to 5%. It's perfectly possible. It's just we're not going to do that because there's a lot of other countries that should, that, that, that should be doing this. And uh, we have to limit, we have to make the most of our GDP. I think that's the best way to put that. Land acquisitions, exports trade surplus or deficit projected cash flow copy this is the amount of spartan quality homes are made how many per year virtual education how many people the cost 
how many people per year in education, healthcare, angel wing software, solar, solar power, electronic cars, and, uh, and on and on and on. So getting a lot of information out of here, mostly all from just changing ENS, experimenting with ENS. Um, certainly over the long term, and certainly when you've got a recession, maximize that E, make it a total monopoly. Uh, ride it out, increase while everyone else loses, come back in, and then everyone's going to want to want to be in Malar because it's just rode out a recession. In fact, it increased during a recession when everybody else lost. So, yeah. And, and of course, that, that leads us open to saying, well, look, you know, we've only got, you know, Malawi's full. Uh, let's, 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 do, uh, let's do South Africa. Let's do, uh, let's do the Philippines for Christian. Let's do Brazil. Let's do... Um, do any everywhere that it, everywhere that needs it, which is half the world. Okay, so yeah, that's the controller, that's the software, that's what, how I want to see it working, and I know how to do this. Uh, Melinda, just give me access to a programmer. I'll do this. Um, rip them on Skype, whatever, uh, or fly me over. And, Put me in the midst of a load of programmers, preferably, but uh, this isn't that. This isn't a hard thing to do. Um, it's it's you know, I just don't have have I haven't had the time to, to turn it into software. Right. So initial inputs, controller, soul shows all the information that we've captured here which took me, I don't know, four or five hours to do, maybe longer, and we can change it in a millisecond on the software. Okay, right, part eight. Da, da, da. We're actually going back in time again. I think this was early to early 2019, not sure. Okay, so this is the RES trade model. Uh, RES version two and three, both, Got stuck, so it'll be duplicated somehow. Okay, so there are this. This has its own set of videos that I will put on the introduction page. It's quite complicated, and I'm not all the free spread. I've had a quick look at this earlier, and all free spreadsheets are relatively similar, and I really. Right, okay. Um, let me find a starting position. What we're doing here is um, instead of doing a theory of every business where we make everything and trade for everything internally, this is a trade model where half of uh, a lot of stuff gets shipped abroad. Let me just try and find it. There should be a place where it says, yeah, okay, this is influenced by Paul Krugman. Your spending is my spending, and my spending is your income. And Paul Collier, whose book I was reading at the time as well. Where's the start position? Hmm, let me just go this one. Okay, start here. So what have we got? I'm putting, uh, I'm dividing Everything into 16. High-end fashion. These are these these were ideas for exports. High-end fashion is great because uh, you know there's there's a big story to go with uh, with the Malawi network if we get it up and running, and um, there's nothing <laughs> more profitable than making you know uh, Gucci, um, Armani. Chanel uh, products because they sell for a fortune because of the branding and that's the you know uh, so there high-end fashion is a good idea technology of course these are exports um, things we, we want to export we, we want to make these and export them and I'm not saying this is how it's going to go I'm just saying these, these are the ideas I had at the time luxury items same idea as high-end fashion um, 
also they're small they're cheap to ex if they're, they're cheap to tra transport there's not, not a lot of carbon footprint shipping um you know 20 boxes of high-end fashion which would sell for just go you know how many millions where versus you know if you if you're transporting coal you know it's obviously that not only is coal but burning but to move the coal in the first place is using electricity uh, <laughs> okay parts for building materials gigafactory parts for goods all companies split building materials parts for goods gigafactory gigafactory solar and similar luxury items building materials technology high-end fashion okay what's going on that's being shipped to the usa for raw materials and parts and we'll see at another point us buying those raw material and parts needed for the technology okay so what we're doing is we're just swapping over different um different goods trade but somewhere down here there's is it here this will this this will make sense in a sec okay here we go um money from tax money from labor okay yeah so tax is taken off and put in here and it's allocated as spending yeah that's how this works yeah okay so your tax it's all bit that that tax would normally just go to the tax man labor would normally go to labor and this is how i think revenue after the loan would normally go to um, to to the financier but because we're using res and we're using di uh, net zero dynamic um, <laughs> net zero dynamic comparative advantage um mainly because we're using res this is re being respent and we are creating one second okay sorry about that um where was it okay so yeah during the course s during the course of business we're taking off the tax we're taking off the labor and we're taking i think expenses as well and this now becomes our spending because this money is now respent on solar or infrastructure or commercial real estate luxury goods welfare education technology this is what the the money's come in now it's going out again and it flips itself over and i think here we start to go into some detail about the 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 res side of things Let's see if i can get a handle on this Okay, so ah, oh, okay, there we go. That's what's come in, and now we're seeing this is the res revenue going out, and that's what it pays for. Yeah, okay. I mean, look, I did a, I did a much better, <laughs> I did a much better video at the time, and we're going to have the um, links to that video on the uh, introductory page of this spreadsheet. This is. I, I can work it out, but it's it was quite specialist this spreadsheet. Okay, yeah, and there's more of the same here, and more of the same here. Sorry, I can't give a better all in one, but this was a very specialist um, sheet to do. Um, trouble was with this model, the trade model. Uh, which you know we're going to have to do to 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 quite a large extent, certainly for things like raw materials, is when the other countries go into recession and their demand stops, we won't have any demand for our goods. Therefore, we can't exchange those goods for the raw materials, um, unless what we make is something that no one can do without 
Um, and given that uh, Malawi is surrounded by poor African countries that rely a lot on aid, and given that you know there's going to be pressure on those countries to green up. Um, by being the country in the middle of Africa or no, bottom right of Africa that pumps out the best net zero goods, the best net zero factories, the be best net zero vehicles that all can be transported by road. Tra um, you know, that that's even when the, 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 the recession happens, the, the aid money is not going to dry up and, blah, you know, it, it <clears throat> this this one I did here was relying on trade. I was using trade very much to uh, to um, to, to maximise the utility of, of the Malawians. Um, but this one, the 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 fashion, the high end fashion is going to dry up like crazy during a recession. You know, the luxury goods are going to dry up during a recession. Um, you're making things that countries need so they can retain getting aid. It's 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 a it's not a it's a necessary good. So you know lessons learned from this. Okay, right. I think this is the last one. Res V1. This is the. Um, Going back to when I first uh, started to to produce uh, long-term histories, this history I think it was 2039, and it's exactly the same as history two and three. Really, it's just instead of going down, I go across, and you can see here the different <laughs> only 9.38 percent of. Uh, the cash flow was going to personnel there. Parts was massive, 63%. Um, reinvestment, 27 That reinvestment is to a degree uh, owned by the personnel. So you could say that is a personnel thing. But anyway, um, so this spreadsheet works on the spin. Here's E95. Spins it once. Uh, so you keep on spinning. And that makes a, co a certain amount. We can see that here. And yeah, so that one, that, that was, that was the, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Mm. Ah, it's fine. This is the very detailed spreadsheet I remember now. You can see here we're starting the net zero dynamic comparative advantage. Uh, work before I heard about it from Stiglitz. So that's cool. <laughs> um, trying to find the main. There we go. I think it makes 20, 20 billion or something. Uh, and what I did, what is this? This is cautious two. Spin, where's spin eight? What is this one? Where's spin eight? Cautious, cautious two. I don't know what the difference between the cautious and cautious two are. Where's spin 24? Cautious. There should be a standard one here. Not a cautious, but there isn't. Hmm. Okay, we're missing a spreadsheet. Um, let me just try and so you see it just quickly. Um, sp 
spend one. That's the initial amount spending. Okay, so I think we started with that times two. So that would have been, what is that, 5.4? Yeah, 5.4 billion. That was the starting money. I can't remember how I worked that out, but um, that's, that's, you know, you need a starting position. And... This was divided by the personnel ah, and supplies and reinvestment or industry, POP. POP is basically when you make a, a certain amount of money, all profit above that amount is spent on creating new companies. Um, and so we've got different sectors and I think different amounts of E for different sectors, i.e. there's no E on land purchases because there's no way you, you can't spin it. You know, you bought your land, that's, that's it. You know, you're, you're not, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, that's all lost money. Um, suppliers, farms, retail, home building. Okay, there we go. And taxes, 100%. And that tax is there. Okay, this is still... This is before I'd worked out tax symmetry, I'm pretty certain. Actually, here's the bulk of money. Half of it goes up here. The, re the other half, okay, all of this is half of this. So if I just explain this... I'll explain all that is below it. Okay, so 100%, that that's how much spent. E of 95%, that's how much is left. Tax, we're not paying any. So that stays that amount. And then, yeah, here we are, spin two. 95%, tax, spin three, 95 Okay, there you go. We're losing 5% a year, basically. So it's uh, e, 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 E95. Okay, and that's how many... Yeah, that's diff. There, were, there was uh, some that went on for eight years and some that went on for 24 years. Is this one of the 24-year ones? Let me s do the same thing. Okay, this is a lot more money. This is 18 billion. And... Yeah, okay, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, there we go. Got a high uh, spin model. And from that 18 billion, they've made 457. We go... D <clears throat> we just copy that over to the right. I think we take that down here. This is an important figure. Roll over from the previous year. Starting to work out the... Um, the savings part, the uh, law of conservation of revenue there. Got um, various stats based on what's going on. Total spending 880, adds to GDP. That's adds to GDP. Okay, that's how much that adds to GDP. Here's some breakdowns of how that's going to be spent. Here's... This is what the government would get using 2.5% growth, I think, from now for 4 billion. And in fact, no, that's, sorry, that's, that's, that's 20, 2024 20, figures. But the point is, uh, even before tax symmetry, that was 213 billion to the government, which is, you know, a lot more than four. Even if it is after a certain amount of years, I think the tax. So I think that the tax part of it was along this channel. Yep, there we see how that works. Got a bit of inf okay. In growth is four percent in Malawi, and over. But over to the right. Hang on, somewhere here is going to be a GDP figure. Malawi GDP. Malawi rise, 155%, 9.1 gain, a lot more than 
Japan's previous record. Um, oh, here we go. 0 0.3. This ah, okay. This one was 0.35% of GDP, and the uncautious one I think was about 1.4, if I remember correctly. I'm going to try and find that and um, add it to this spreadsheet. Um, lastly, just some stuff on the right. What's this telling us? Not a lot. This is about investor returns. Okay, lastly, I think, uh, is this spreadsheet? Remember, we're going in reverse order. This is the very first, and the very first considered uh, powering Malawi as um, an essential thing that we really should do first. Uh, Malawi has mostly not got power. Um, now, I'm pretty certain I'm wrong here somewhere because it turned out to be relatively cheap to power Malawi. Um, and that can't be right because otherwise everyone would be powering their, themselves. But uh, solar, certainly, if it's going to work anywhere, it's going to work in Malawi as well anyway. I don't think they have particularly bad winds or hurricanes or anything like that that's going to take up or disturb the uh the solar arrays and certainly they've got enough sun uh that said uh, i'd love to love to put a nuclear power plant there uh one of the new versions the bill gates version where they actually power it by using the waste of current nuclear power plants so it's actually <laughs> it, it, i it, i don't know i'm not going to say because i don't know too much about it but it sounds to me like it actually cleans up the earth so uh, that's that's net zero plus 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 and uh, Bill Gates apparently well not apparently it was in his documentary on Netflix I think it was Netflix or was it Amazon I don't know uh, inside Bill's brain and yeah they really nearly got somewhere with nuclear power and then the Fukushima thing happened and they really uh, nearly got somewhere in, with China but then uh, President Trump messed up the trade. So he's a bit like, oh, that's, you know, where else are we going to find scale? And yeah, well, here's where we're going to find scale. Um, nuclear power plants in every single, uh, every single grand spin network would, would do well. Uh, <laughs> you know, you never have too much power. The, that, I wonder how much power one can make and how that can be used into a, a mass of desalination plants that just flood Sahara with uh, with water and then turn it back into a, a forest, forest turn it back into turn it into a big forest and some nice real estate yeah okay um, one hour 42 hmm I think this is the longest video I've ever made Okay, I'm now probably going to do, I think I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to do a short version of this for anybody who isn't a researcher. Uh, if anybody has uh, got through this, um, remember the name Weetabix and tell it to me when, I, uh, when, when, we, when, when we meet and I'll laugh. Okay, thank you.